Gun shop employees of Reddit. What are some red flags that have caused you to deny a sale of a firearm? Serious. Already posted one here but another doozy was sketchy bloke comes in and wants to look at lever action shotguns. Before this things even left my hands he smashing the lever as hard and fast as he can. I asked him to not do that and had to explain to a grown as man why it's not okay to roughly handle a brand new anything that you haven't bought. He's got one of those 5 year old kids he keeps interrupting us talking cause he wanted to hold the gun. I turned my back to double check price and when I turn around I'm looking down the barrel of the shotgun the father's handed to his kid and hear the click of him dry firing it at me. Ripped it out of this kid's hand and told the dad to get the duck out and dad starts abusing me cause I hurt his kid's hand when I pulled the shotgun away. Having his kid fire a shotgun in my face isn't that big of a deal apparently. Obvious straw purchases. Dude they asks all the questions and does the shopping and dude be, or girlfriend, wants to fill out the background check and pay for it. GTFO. Edit. A lot of comments about gifting. What I'm talking about is something different. Imagine a couple people showing up that just enjoyed some meth or brought in a cloud of weed along with them. I'm not talking about a dude and his girlfriend picking out a gun for her or something. Edit 2. Some people complaining about my weed comment. I don't have anything against it myself but it's illegal to own firearms and smoke weed. I wasn't being hyperbolic. People actually come and smelling strongly of it. If you smell like weed but mark no I don't use any illegal drugs on the 4473 federal background check form, then I no longer feel comfortable selling to you because the rest of the responses could be lies too. We get lots of people who use us for transfers. They buy online and then the gun comes to us and we handle the background check. One guy had done a transfer with us previously and I got a bad feeling about him. Nothing concrete. He just bugged me. A few weeks later. He called again for another transfer. The gun was coming from Alaska. So I told him it was going to take a bit longer than usual and I'd call him as soon as it arrived. The next day. He called wanting to know if I had a tracking number yet. I didn't. The Alaska FFL only did business by mail. How the hell a letter was supposed to get to Alaska overnight? I know not. Again. I told him to be patient. Fast forward a week and he calls me three times. He lets slip that the dealer in Alaska won't talk to him and he needs me to be the go-between. That's a red flag. Sellers normally communicate with buyers. He was acting really sketchy and impatient so I had decided to deny the sale. So, I called the dealer because this was getting sketchy. The dealer told me he cancelled the sale. Interesting. Never had that happen before. The dealer said and I'm quitting here that guy is a serial killer in the making. He'd harass the dealer several times a day starting on the day he ordered the gun. The dealer said the guy knew the sale was cancelled because he told him and refunded his money. That settled it for me. I wasn't interested in handling any transfers for him. When I finally blocked his phone number, two days after talking to the dealer, I had 35 missed calls from him. TLDR. Guy was super impatient about a transfer harassed the seller and spooked him pretty badly. Logged 35 missed calls to my phone in two days. Finally one that I can answer. I was living in Alaska for a year and picked up a part-time job in the winter as a gun counter clerk at a national sporting goods chain. One slow evening a kid comes in. By kid I'm talking college aged. And starts staring into the pistol case. I ask him if he wants to see one and that I'd need his ID to verify his AGTC. All's going well. It's obvious he's new to guns. I ask him what his intended per person use was in order to find what might suit his needs. He says he wants a cowboy style gun and all he wants to do is to go shooting to let off steam. That is mom teases him for always being on the computer and growing up a pussy. The more I talked to him the more I realized he was just a closet weeboo otaku. My brothers are full on weeboo so I told the kid about how they had a big group of friends who met once a year during AX or Comic Con SD. Kid was straight up starry eyed. Told me he wishes he knew people like that. That if he had friends like that he wouldn't have bipolar issues. In the end I told the kid not to buy a gun. Save up his money and GTFO of Alaska. I swear I've not had a happier customer. Dude didn't even buy anything. Former gun shop employee here. An automatic ejection from the store was when the customer asks which kind of firearm is effective for harming or killing people. 
I've personally called the police on a few sketchy buyers. All came through with having warrants or issues. My boss didn't take this kind of it lightly. We had short team meetings every week to ensure everyone understood what goes on. He was an excellent boss. I used to work in a large outdoors retailer. I had a man come in for a gun that refused to give me his ID. Also didn't want to give me his name, address, date of birth or any other info. He said he should just be able to answer the questions on the background check and that should be all I needed. Sale denied. Guy walked in wearing a bulletproof vest. Paperwork accuracy is a big issue. It has to be 100%. If your gov issued ID doesn't match the info you put on a form and you don't have any of the allowed supporting information then no gun sales to you. Had one guy come in only with the title to his car. No gov issued photo ID. He spouted some BS about sovereign citizen blah blah. We took his info and blacklisted him in the computer. We didn't want to be associated with that type of folks. We would also ask what the intended user was for and lead them with a certain hunting season. An example would be okay why do you need a 22 rifle? Going to hunt some deer? If they would answer yes. No gun. The 22 rifle. While capable to kill a deer. Is not allowed in our state's hunting regulations. Or any that I know of. Big red flag. We had a protocol that if we got strange customers. Like folks asking for one bullet. Seemed like they were just trying to get any gun. Making threatening statements etc. We would make them fill out their section of the 4473 form. Photocopy their ID. Then deny the sale. This way we could involve law enforcement as needed. If we just told them no. You have nothing else than a itty description and some security camera footage. The one that really sticks out is the guy who in the course of small talk feeling out the customer asked if he could walk out with the gun that day. We told him that if the paperwork was acceptable and the background check came back as a proceed that he would be able to. He follows up with a good, how I can ice my itch of a wife. We had him do the paperwork, copied his ID and denied him right there. He was pissed to say the least. He finally left. We called the cops and they followed up with a wellness check. Turns out he was just a Ted. Still blacklisted him in the computer. Back when I used to work behind the counter I had a guy who wouldn't stop sweeping customers and employees with the muzzle of firearms he asked to see. I warned him several times to stop. When he deliberately aimed it at a customer I immediately took the pistol away and kicked him out the store. That kind of unsafe behavior is something I won't tolerate and I certainly denied sales back then and I will deny training if I see it on the range now. Drugs. Had a guy come in one time with his family and wanted something cheap. He had all these track marks on his arms, scabs on his face, and was really out of it. I did my best to tell him no without making a fuss and finally had to say something about the track marks in front of everyone. Not a good day for him. I guess he'd been telling his family they were from something else and they believed him. I worked in a gun store for about a year and a half. Had a couple guys come in asking for cheap firearms. Okay no big deal. People are on a budget. Been there. So they give me a price point of about 250 bucks. Again no big deal. They want a handgun not a revolver. Showed them a used hip point. Karmic. And a couple of cars and a Caltech. They ask me to disassemble to see the serial numbers. Kinda weird but figured they just wanted to make sure the guns matched up or something like that. Then I overhear them talking about blacking out the serial number. Ask them why they want to black them out and if they know it's illegal. Say that they wanted untraceable guns. Nope. Told them to leave. I like it when they make it obvious for me and, hopefully, joke about shooting at school's protesters. It happens more than you would think. Also, don't send your friend you were browsing with to try and buy the exact same firearm that you wanted 15 minutes after I told you I couldn't sell to you. Our range rents out firearms for trap skeet shooting. Had a lady come in asking strange questions like does it hurt if someone gets shot with it and also acted weird when she answered a call and told the person that she was at a coffee shop. She left, and we called the cops to file a report of a suspicious person. I don't work in a gun shop, but I'm an avid collector and conduct private sales every so often. In my state, there's a couple of modest rules that have to be followed. You can't knowingly transfer to a prohibited person. You can't transfer across state lines. 
you can't transfer to a minor unless they are a family member. That kind of thing. Due to my state's proximity to Illinois and Chicago, and the relative ease of obtaining a carry license, the carry license has become kind of a stand-in for background checks that private sellers can't do. I ask for a driver's license to show residency. A carry permit to show this person would pass a 4473 background check if I ran one. Then have them fill out a bill of sale basically saying I promise I'm not a prohibited person. Any legit gun enthusiast can breeze through those requirements. People who get itty about them set off red flags for me. This, one dude, super sketched me out, and I took some screen grabs of the conversation. Basically, he was from out of state and tried to cajole me into selling him an AK pattern rifle. After double and triple checking the relevant laws, I told him I wasn't comfortable with a private sale, but I'd be more than happy to go to a dealer and pay the transfer fee. It's legal to transfer to an out of state buyer if you do it through a dealer. We'd have met at a gun store and taken 10 minutes to do it. He wasn't happy with that. He sent this random gun collection picture. Claiming to already own several machine guns, they weren't, so obviously he can't be a prohibited person. Then he tried the whatever, I'll just buy from someone else move. Probably hoping I'd be in a hurry to sell. Never be in a hurry to sell. I bid him on his way. I maintain a no sketch policy for sales. There's always another buyer out there who won't give you it about basic ass covering. A week later. The rifle sold to a completely normal dude with a valid permit who lived in the next county over. I think the guy was just an idiot. Not a criminal straw buyer or an aspiring mass shooter. But when someone argues with you about the law and tries to pressure you into a sale. That's a red flag. Edit. Thank you for the gold. I also accept baggies of loose .22 LR. Homemade cookies. And socks. I did front-end code for a lot of small firearm companies that used NFD and GFI websites to sell guns online. You wouldn't believe the amount of successful fraud there was in purchasing $10,000 scopes. However the worst customer that one of them told me about was a man who had murdered his girlfriend a few days after purchasing a gun. She, gun shop owner, unfortunately didn't see any red flags and lost her business over what happened. She was forced to close for investigation but by the time the investigation was completed she had lost too much money and had to couldn't afford to keep paying the lease on her location. Gun license photo, in Australia, looked nothing like him and he couldn't tell me the name or birthday on the license. I asked because there was a lack of resemblance between him and picture and a big red flag when he picked up a rifle and pressed his eye hard into the scope to look through it. Just walked out with his head down when he was told we're keeping the lost stolen gun license. In the times before the instant background check, we just took their word for it. The guy answered yes on the have you been convicted of a felony question. I told him he couldn't buy a gun. He asked for another form so he could answer no. I told him to leave and never come back. Either it was an ATF sting, or he was too stupid to own a gun saying stupid stuff, avoiding conversation and eye contact, consulting their partner who they were hiding outside. Yes we can see you out there. Some get by though. Husband and wife were looking for new turkey guns before the season. She came in later that week and picked up new hunting gear and shotgun. Walked to get car and shot herself. Lots of bolo phone conversations with other shops. Being near a city kept us on our toes. I tried to copy as many IDs as possible. In NY you can only handle handguns with a permit, so that reduced a lot of knuckleheads. Worked at a large outdoor store in their firearms section. Had a customer come in and ask about a precision rifle chambered in .338 Lapua. Then while handing him his background paperwork he asked how far can this bullet hit a human sized target. He said he was buying it for big game hunting. A little sketchy I know. I gave him some answer oh at least 1000 yards. But I'll get a definite answer. Walked in back to find the manager. Who was the only person who can deny a sale. Explained what happened. Manager had him fill out paperwork and get his ID then denied sale immediately after. And the kicker was he used his Chinese passport with a student visa as his ID. Police were called and they took it to the FBI. Reverse situation. Knife dealer at a gun show and a guy wanted to trade a fairly unique handgun for knives. I little geeky, but no major red flags. No problem. 
he picked out his knives which resulted in a good sized stack of blades. Talking to him while bagging them he says he wanted to trade the gun for knives because I never get the chance to shoot people. I already had his info and reported him to local PD and had a gun checked. He came back clean and so did the gun. In the end. Just an odd fellow. About a year ago I had a lady doing the paperwork to transfer a pistol and she asked the question. Felonies go away after 20 years. Right? I promptly picked everything up and said nope. Have a good day. His mother asked us not to sell him a gun. I used to work for an big box outdoors store. It wasn't our store. But one NFT. Worth. We got an email about it. Woman called store and warned them her husband was on his way to buy a gun to kill her. Thankfully she called before they got there and he got denied. No idea what happened after that though colon. Guy came in looking pretty ill. His face was bright red and he was sweating profusely while struggling to breathe. One of my employees was convinced he might be having a heart attack so he asked if he was okay. This guy went ballistic and cussed him out for bothering him. One of the many insane things he yelled was. What, you got something against red people? My employee backed off and let us know that he was unhinged. He walked over to the gun counter and asked to see a revolver. He immediately pointed it at my formerly concerned employee and said, I wonder if this would be good enough to put a bullet through the head of that nosy son of H. We had already been filled in by our plain clothed loss prevention guy who was now following him around after his outburst. When he made that threat I didn't bother asking him to put the gun down. We have to assume the worst so I took it from him. I couldn't risk giving him any chance to load it in case he was concealing ammunition. You never know. He started screaming that he was going to get a gun and kill us all. Our loss prevention didn't take kindly to that and attempted to physically restrain him until the police could arrive. It took four of us to hold that big bastard down. Needless to say he was arrested for terroristic threats and assault. I work at a small shop on the Ohio River. When I say small, I mean it's the owner, his son, and me. That being said, we sell a lot of firearms because we have a decent selection and the absolute best prices available to any customer. With us being so small, we all see pretty much every gun sale. We will personally refuse to sell to anyone one of the three of us find sketchy at all. If you smell of weed or alcohol, no sale. If we know you from our small town somehow and you've got a violent reputation, no sale. The most common red flag I see is children coming in with an older friend to buy the gun for them. If you look remotely close to being under 21 at all, we ask for your ID if you're with someone attempting to purchase a firearm. We see 16 and 17 year old kids come in with friends who are 21-24ish that try to buy the gun for their younger friend. No sale that day, or any for either of them. I don't care if 24 year old comes back alone. No sale. If the younger friend turns 18. No sale. Sorry bud. But if we feel it's not worth the risk. No screaming or crying or but my daddy lets me. Is going to change our minds. 1. People saying or wanting several at a time and after questioning figuring out they were intent on going to the gun show to sell them for way more than purchased for. The common thing was people would buy a $500 to $700 AR then take it to a gun show and be able to sell it for $1200 plus. This was during the Obama administration. 2. People not knowing what firearm they want but being very general. Example. C. I want a 9mm. Me. Okay any particular brand? C. Doesn't matter. Me. Okay. What price range are you in? C. Man. I don't care. I just need a gun. 3. People trying to buy for a friend but try to say it's a gift. 4. People lying about their information. I'm sure some of the other gun sellers in here can help but there's so many little things when it comes to dealing with people in the firearm industry. You learn how to read people. What questions to ask. And how to ask them. It's similar to when cops get a hunch and something ends up not being right. Happy to address any questions. Concerns. ETC. Thanks for reading. I worked behind the sporting goods counter at a Walmart. I can't remember exactly what made me think the guy was trying to buy for someone else. But the sale was suspicious. So I declined to sell him a long gun. He immediately got irate. 
He started yelling at me and slamming his fists against the counter demanding that I hand him a gun. Sure I'm going to hand the belligerent man a firearm. He demanded to speak to management who escorted him out of the building. Demeanor is a big thing for me. If you walk in and are nervous, most people are trying to suppress their excitement, then it's a big red flag for me. I have had people try to buy without the correct licenses in Massachusetts. Also, if you come in looking like you got your it rocked, seen it a few times, and are asking to buy a cheap tactical firearm, then I'm showing you the door. Edit. Punctuation. Lately my store has had a small string of Chinese citizens on work visas come in. Trying to buy handguns. Now, we can legally sell a handgun to a non-US citizen. But there's a lot more paperwork and it's intended to be an exemption for hunting. Sorry dude. You're not going to hunt with a Glock 19 or a Sandwest D9VE. When she started filling out her last will and testament on a napkin while the paperwork was running. She was going to shoot her husband apparently. Anytime someone asks for the cheapest gun we sell. Not a good starting point. I worked for the Mart for a number of years selling guns. The most blatant red flag to me was just someone wanting a gun. But not idea brand, model, or caliber that they wanted. In my 7 years selling, all while Nix was running, I only ever had 2 denied background checks. One was a guy who had threatened his parents and had been arrested a few days before. He had just been released from jail and came straight to us. Came off as a normal guy. Not a single red flag. The other was a guy who was excited he finally got to participate in deer gun season because his restraining order against his ex-wife is finally expired. I knew his ex-wife. They had settled their differences long ago and were on good terms. Or so he thought. He was two days from the expiration date actually and the cops had to get involved in that. I truly felt bad for that guy. Small gun store in the southwest. One fellow came in asking for help reading and speaking English. Sorry but I cannot do the background check for you. Big red flag how did you get to driver's license without being able to read? These are things I looked for. Someone being coached by a person they are with or apparently over the phone. Regarding the firearm or the purchase procedure. Someone lying about being a citizen. Border state. Someone who looked wrong. Things like face tattoos and wearing all the same color of clothing from head to foot. While those aren't illegal to do or have. I am not selling to someone wearing a gangbanger's uniform. Anyone intoxicated. Anyone in behaving in an odd way. Anyone who is apparently angry or in some kind of elevated emotional state. Wanting a firearm for a bullet reason. Say, trying to buy a 9mm handgun for hunting. Anyone who seems like they will be blatantly unsafe or is immature. Think that about covers it. I used to work in a big box store that sold guns, so not really a gun store, but still, and we got a fair amount of strange people. Weirdest that stood out is the woman who proudly and without prompt recounted her tale of being groped and shooting a man in the D. A lot of people that came by the gun counter just wanted to shoot the it with us. Pun intended. Had one or two gangbangers that came in and promptly left when they learned that there is a background check. Most people in there were pretty normal though. Owner and operator of a internet sales oriented firearms business. But I do sale in person do FBCs for other FFLS in the area. I don't have any guidelines as to what I look for. Aside from the federally mandated rules. I do however. Have gut feelings that will push me to deny a sale. If a customer comes in with bruises on their hands. I will deny a sale regardless if they pass or FBC. Bruises like this are generally caused by physical violence. Which is something I look for. Another sign is if they come in distraught. Acting weary or nervous. Again. Even if they pass the FBC I will deny a sale to them in most cases. Same goes for any physical or emotional signs of mental impairment. Had a man come in around 6 months ago looking to buy one of my rifles. He passed the FBC. No issues. Had a gut feeling that I should deny the sale. And did so. Three days later he was charged with domestic assault for beating his girlfriend to a pulp. I might have saved her life by denying the sale. There are other typical things. Such out outwardly signs of drug or alcoholism. As an FFL. I have the right to deny service to anyone for any reason. And I try to be as fair as humanly possible. 
Will there be some that fall through the crack? Yes. Will I feel responsible? Probably. Am I at fault if they pass the federal background check then commit a crime with my firearm? No. Straw purchases. When the purchaser of the firearm is not the actual person that the firearm is intended for. I've had people, mostly female significant others, come in with a person that is doing all the inquiries of the firearm, pointing out the firearm that they want and so forth. Then when it comes time to start paperwork the person that showed no interest in any firearm is the one who tries doing the paperwork. I clarify that the person who the firearm is intended for has to be the one who submits the paperwork and have a background check otherwise it's a straw purchase. They then inevitably say that they are the intended end user of the firearm. I deny them and call around to the other shops in my area and let them know about the denied attempted straw purchase because I've had several of the denied attempted purchasers say I'm just going to go purchase the gun from somewhere else before. But also because I don't want people that aren't supposed to have guns getting their hands on them. If you're a felon or not legally in this country, you do not have my second amendment rights. Which one of these can penetrate a school bus? Yeah. We called the cops on his ass. So there's a thing called a straw purchase. It's when individual A can't legal purchase a firearm. And so they get individual B to purchase it for them. I had several occurrences when a couple of people would come on together. One would lead the questions. And then disappear as soon as the paperwork came out. That's a dead giveaway. Bonus. Once had a guy come in asking for a chopper. I had no idea what he meant until he said he was looking for an AK. First thing he asked was can I kill someone with this? I took it back. Locked it up. Told him that those were the magic words that mean you lose the chance to handle guns. And walked off. He tried to defend himself by saying I meant a pig. Double quote. I haven't had to deny anyone yet. But I came close once. Guy came in and mumbled about the Muslim scourge. But without skipping a beat kept talking about collecting enough to be able to defend his home with a gun hidden within reach no more than 5 steps away from everywhere in the house. It was obvious he was just paranoid. But defensively so. Which is fine. Paranoid and wanting to go hunting for Muslims. On the other hand. And we would have had a problem. Related note. I got advice from our local ATF inspector that if I ever wanted to deny someone for a gut check reason. I was free to tell them their background check came back bad or delayed even if it came back clean. Just to keep it from looking like I was the one turning him away and prevent an escalation. She also said to call the ATF whenever that happened so they could follow up. This is why a lot of us tend to talk to the customers as much as possible. To get a better handle on their personality and see if there was something that gives us an instinctive gut check. I just want to say thanks to I've got a blue panda idea for posting this question. I am enjoying reading the comments and answering questions. The stuff you read and conversations in this question thread are often an every week if not everyday occurrence for most big box gun shop employees. Yes. Even the crazy stories and for every one there is there are at least 10 others which would make even the harshest critics say. Whoa. Yeah glad you were able to help them out. No matter what side of the fence you are on I hope everyone gets to see some of what we experience. The rules, which we have to know, follow, and be able to communicate understandably, and what all goes into purchasing a firearm. I can't speak for everyone but in my personal experience in gun sales you have to walk a fine line between running a business and selling firearms. We do have to tell people we can't sell them this product but we have to do so in a way which doesn't lose their business completely. Do we make good calls? Yes. Do we make bad calls? Yes. Thanks again for reading and I'm happy to address any questions, concerns, complaints, or feedback. I've had tons of people come by and think they can buy a gun without a license. Mostly people who look like they do meth. And when they don't have a license I would get it with but I can still get one without it right? Way too often. There was one time I was letting two guys take a look at a 1911 and I heard one guy under his breath say that's what Terry shot that cholo with to the other guy. They spent very little time in the store after that.